Now let's get started. It's time to welcome you to the show. So thank you for joining us on episode 12 of our Journey of Voices. It's been a while. Yeah. We're excited to finally have you. Um, today we definitely want to talk to you about the foundation, enjoying life, and battling the ego. So before we dive too much into this, Jesus, please tell us a little bit about yourself. So hey, hi Andreas, hi Canar. Thank you. My name is Jesus Hernandez. I'm from Venezuela. I'm a 22 year old. And this is the 12th episode of... 12th episode. Amazing. Yes. I'm an international student. I'm doing marketing. And that's a little bit about me. Okay. All right. All right. So let's, let's find out a little bit more. I want to find out kind of what shaped you, right? So you're from Venezuela. Yep. So what was it like growing up in Venezuela? What kind of things did you do in your childhood? You know, what are, who your role models, mentors, things like that? Growing up was interesting. I... I could say that I come from a loving and caring family. Um, we were, we have a tight bond relationship, bond relationship, I should say. I, we, lo we had dogs. I had, I grew up around dogs, which is a good thing mm -hmm. because that's where I learned loyalty. What's, re okay. what's loyalty itself? Growing up, I, I go, I went to a private uh, or a high school. I had a good, good relationships with my with my high school friends, which you, which it was very amazing. Um, like you, you mentioned that the other day, and we were talking. You had a really good relationship. You said it was like a family. Yep. You know, so what yep. kind of did what kind of things did you do with your friends after school? Tack with in Taekwondo as well, or did you guys you know yes. walk around the street? Like, what Take, was yeah. So as I as I was gonna say, my biggest role model so far and my biggest mentor I would say in my life since I. Since I was born, I would say it's my father, and then my mother, my grandmother, my my family, because I grew up with them, and uh, my friends. I would see them every day from Monday to Friday, and then we would do, you know, group work outside of outside of the classroom, and that bring brought us closer to each other, and it was pretty enjoy. It was a big enjoyment, even though we, you know, we bullied each other, but it, it was pretty. Pretty amazing. Yeah, we had a good relationship, mm -hmm. and I, uh, looking back from now, I learned a lot about it. When I was in it, I didn't. Um, maybe I, I misunderstood things, okay. but right now it's cl clear when I look back. Okay, this is the relationship we had, and af because after I graduate, I kind of lost contact with with them mm. because you know all of us went its way, and then now we're. Each of us are building our own life, so we lost touch. And I thought, well, we're a friend, we're a family. I thought we were gonna be more in touch, but it it it's, it hasn't been that way. Okay. And then I look back and I'm like, mm. it's like a puzzle. You put it together and now it start kind of makes sense. Okay, so my question, bit. I got another question for you then. Um, <clears throat> so what are your values? My values. My biggest value, as I said to you guys, was resiliency. That's that that that's a uh, that's what I believe the most. That's the core, my core foundation. Because that's what it it's it's helped me a lot going through. Because life is a challenge. Life it's not easy, and that has helped me go through knowing because when I. Resi I said resiliency because as an example would be when I go through a through a struggle that's when I learn the most about myself and when I'm when I'm struggling I'm not I'm not that type of person to talk to someone and tell them hey I'm going through this I kind of like dive in, into myself and just observe what's going on and mm -hmm. see what I can do and I uh, that's my biggest asset I believe in that that if I know myself and if and if, I, if if I'm comfortable with my own skin, that's it. That's that's all I need. Nothing else matters. Have you always thought that way, or did it take a little bit, a little bit of building to get to that point? It to took building for sure. It took mm -hmm. big building. And as I as I told you guys, when as Steve Jobs says, you cannot you can't connect the the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So for sure, I struggled in my in my youth, and the biggest I think 
the biggest challenge for me was when I when I was going to the U.S. and I couldn't go to the to the school there when when I was gonna do my English there. There was a big setback, big big setback, and that's when my mom told me, "Hey, Sus, don't worry. Things happen for a reason." And I and I didn't listen because I was really mad and you know I couldn't believe it. It was it was like the only thing, and then all of a sudden it's a no, I can't do it. And after that, I, I learned a lot. And then I started thinking, or not thinking, but that's when I realized that things happen for a reason. And now when I look back, now it makes sense, much more sense. Okay. So now you're able to appreciate it. Appreciate it more and, and enjoy the moment. And that would be my value again, okay. my biggest value. It's like. And so that comes to all of the things like, you're a very passionate person and you have things that really drive you. I know obviously being resilient, you have to ground yourself at different times because you don't always know why things are happening. Yep. Um, you know, obviously you're expecting to go to the US, end up in Canada. Um, that's a setback, but you made it work. Um, more recently, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on, but more recently, you're waiting to be approved to be able to study here and continue studying here. Yep. That's a big setback. So your passions, how have you found, because I know obviously education, that's one, of the, that's one of the things. So how has your family really pushed you in, in terms of your passion? So in terms of the guideline or mentor, as I said, my father was always, Jesus, you gotta study. That's the only way to not be someone in life, but you know, achieve, achieve something. Education, education, and ever, Ever since high school, as I told you guys, I got a bad grade, and I I went to, you know, to his place, and he's like, Jesus, what's going on here? He got a calculator, and he starts adding things up. I, what's going on? You know, I was scared because mm -hmm. I was always scared. My mom, first off, my mom would go to school and get the the grades, and then my dad would see it. Okay. So, jeez. <laughs> like, my biggest, my. Biggest addiction, because it was an addiction, it was PS3, Call of Duty. I was a big Call of Duty fan. So he said, well, you know, you have bad grades, you need to improve this. So, go at it, your full-time job is studying, nothing else. So I wanted to improve this, no more PS3, till the next semester. And that's when I told you guys the story about my friend. I was waiting for the grades, and we were in the classroom. And I asked the professor out loud in the middle of the class, Professor, when are our grades coming? Because I need to know, I need my PS3. And all <laughs> my friends started laughing. He says, why, why did you, like, what? You are the only one who would say that. And they all laugh until this day, they, my friend remembers. So that's uh, my biggest passion. It's education, but in a way, as I said, is self awareness. Self awareness is the biggest one. Uh, knowing myself because I'm able when I if I know myself that's when I'm able to overcome challenges if I don't know myself then how, how am I gonna do it and I've realized that through setbacks because setbacks it's what really gets you to know yourself in, in my case the, the self-awareness and that has helped me a lot knowing myself even though it's hard because I won't say it's not easy when you have when you have a setback, it's it's very tough. It's not easy. So what kind of what kind of things did you do to build that self awareness? I mean, from bouncing back from some of those setbacks, do you journal? Like, how do you become more self aware? What steps did you take? I would say the the biggest one, it's being grateful for what I have. You know, being grateful from for for what I have, and that, that's the. For me, it would be the first, the first step or foundation of of self awareness, mm. and then knowing myself more, meaning what gets me mad, what gets, what makes me happy, um, what what I like about this person, what I don't like about this person, how can I how can I work with it, right? Mm. You're transitioning. It is important to have something that grounds you, right? And we kind of talked about your guiding philosophy and things like that yesterday. So if you want to share, because I'm, we know Jesus, you know, <laughs> we know a lot about you, but but they don't share, know, yeah, they don't know, right? <laughs> so if you want to share, 
Um, when you were transitioning into St. Mary's, mm -hmm. and if maybe during that time that's when you developed your guiding philosophy or you paid more attention to what grounds you. Yeah. Because you definitely had to deal with some struggles when you were making that transition, right? right but right. kept on pushing. All right, so if you want to enlighten us with that story, I'm sure we all appreciate so, it. So, you want to know how how I got into my guiding philosophy? Yeah, how, yeah, and, and I'm wondering if right. how you transitioned to SNU. I went to Toronto and I, that's when I studied English as a second language because my English was not as good as now. And that was the best, best moment of my life. So, it was so good. And I enjoyed it, I met amazing people. And now that I look back, it, it's it's a great, it's 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 an amazing memory. So from there, I waited about I would say eight months or so. Then I came to SMU, and the first, my first year was hard. It was very it was hard to even to memorize to study for the test, and then everything was in English. Professors, you know, would speak English to me, and it wouldn't be a big of a difference because in Toronto it was kind of the same. But now you're in university, it's a different feeling. So that was very that was, that was tough my first year. Second year I was more used to it. And then I would say when I when I pers when I found my guiding philosophy, which it can change mm -hmm. because I'm growing up. Absolutely. Was maybe I would say a year, a year ago, a year and a half ago, that that's when I realized when I started reading because you know you have thoughts in your in your mind, but when you see them written, or when someone else writes, then you realize, oh, this is what I'm thinking. So that's when I started saying, okay, first off, self-awareness, knowing myself, knowing who I am, what makes me happy, what makes me mad. And I realized, okay, if I've been through this, through situations in my life, when I, when I have setbacks, and then I, I realized if I know myself, that's it, that, that's what matters. And now I realized that this is one of my, or of my foundations. Mm -hmm. And then the second one, the, as I said to you guys, the ego. Yeah. Don't, the ego is just, it's, it's amazing because the ego gets, will get to you at some point. It, either you're a student, whatever you do in life, if you're a, if you if you have a high position in a company, everyone will need favors from you, or they will. I want an appointment with you, and then you start feeling important, and you forget where you where you come from, or not where you come from, but what's what's your core. So that that's what I truly believe that now, if I'm if I'm a student now, I'm, I'm able to to keep myself humble as humble. For me, humble would be saying hi to whoever I know. Hi, how are you? Listening to them. If I'm in a rush, it's okay. But at least you know I'm, I'm saying hi. They're saying hi to me. Mm -hmm. That that's important to me. Making someone not feel important, but you know having that no, relationship. No, it's like connecting with them. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. So when I when I I, I knew I, I know I went away from the ego, but. Going back to the ego. Going back, of course. <laughs> yeah. When I first learned about the ego, I was watching a movie that's called it's called the Devil, the Devil's Advocate, and that's when the when Al Pacino tells the lawyer, you if, no matter if you're number one, you still have to act like you're number two, because when you're number one, you feel you're the best and you don't gotta worry. Yeah, about them. You're not and then you're in a position that you you become you become someone that it's selfish. And I don't want I, I don't want to be there. Whenever I catch myself that I'm, my ego is getting into me, I want to keep keep myself grounded. And that's what I said. The self awareness has helped me through that. Even I, no matter what I have, no matter what position I have, I, I still want to say, hey, I want to be here because I want to be happy with myself. And if I drive a Ferrari or whatever car, you know, when you drive a good car, and or you have a position, what it, whatever it makes you feel something mm -hmm. that gets into, oh, you feel better than someone else. No, that's, uh, I don't like that. So driving, as I was saying, you drive a nice car and then... <laughs> got firm grip on that steering Yeah, <laughs> you know, everyone, everyone looks at you or... You start feeling something, but you have, keep yourself humble. You, I love Warren Buffett. 
big billionaire and he's so humble super humble so that for me is it's super important self-awareness and ego knowing that no matter what i have will influence my thoughts or my my view on things so building on that uh, kind of drawing it back to where you talked about listening and being able to connect with people because that keeps yeah. you your that keeps your ego in check yep. listening to other people listening to yourself uh, being self-aware and listening I know that's that's always been something that's important for you and being heard and understood in the sense of when we spoke about your experience in Toronto when one of the students kind of questioned you he was an, another international student but not from Venezuela yeah so when politics came up that was very different because he wasn't listening to you he was just talking at you yeah. and so I know you talked a little bit about your passion and just your your energy and yeah. sentiment about that yeah can you talk to us what it's like trying to ground yourself you know away from home when things are going back that you're not happy about so yeah that day we were in class it was afternoon after lunch and we were talking about i can't remember the topic but then this guy he said oh the president of venezuela at the time was chavez he's He's the best. He gives to the people and all the what media puts up. So I said, he he kept talking, and I was getting angry because I don't think that way, and it's hatred, hate, hatred kind of thing. And I got mad and I start saying, no, this is not the way it is, and I start saying, speaking, speaking, talking, talking. And I got mad. I got red. I was pissed off. Then the professor said, Jesus, you have to calm down. Not calm down. I had to calm down and that's when I realized that I that's a big issue for me. It's a sensitive topic for me. And uh, I have to keep calm. And I realized that somehow it's like when I when I go into taekwondo fights when you're very mad but you have to control because you have your, you have strategy, you have to get the scores, right? So you have to somehow be mindful or be in the moment so i would say that the the key for that was realizing that i had that issue and then saying to myself okay whenever you're faced when you see that emotion arising within you calm down and realize this person is not not from your country mm -hmm. you don't have the same views listen to 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 what he has to say or she has to say and then talk in a calm way, <laughs> not angry like us. No, no, that's the key, right? <laughs> so, and, and yeah. then that's where we, you know, we're talking about that because it's tough to not just react. Because every time you react, right? every time there's a situation, right, you have your logic and then your emotion that comes. And when you react, your, your emotion's quicker to yeah. get there than, than your logic is, right? And even in you know, those situations where you know you shouldn't do something, you shouldn't say something because you know what the outcome's going to be. But your emotion gets you first, and you say, "Oh, well, I'm upset. I don't like what you're saying." Yeah. Um, or when you're, uh, you know, whether it's a setback, oh, I get this bad grade. Oh, I'm upset. Yeah. Or somebody, you know, my friends is are calling me Chavez. Yeah. <laughs> get it? Yeah, get it. Get it. Um, you know. So, but can you talk to us because there is there is a difference because in Taekwondo there's that balance right. between when you know when you're in fighting, you're prepared, you're ready to react. But in your day-to-day -day life, you're not, life happens. You're not expecting punches, right. you know, metaphorically speaking, to come at you. So can you talk to us of what finding that, that balance is like for you or has been like? It's been tough. It's been just like the picture, you know, the road to, the road, the road, uh, the road to success looks like this, same thing. <laughs> like you go up and then you feel good. And that's when I say the, the ego gets to you and you have to be careful. Mm. Then you go down again. So that's why you, you have to be ready, you have to have a st strong foundation. So after realizing that, that that was a sensitive topic for me, and now being, uh, being here, people have different opinions, and I, I have to respect that. And I just have to say, hey, listen, the best thing I always say is, if you haven't lived there, then don't say that. I said, go live there, and then come to me and say, ABC, then we can have a discussion. But that's what 
good to be mad at also. It's a sensitive topic for me. So how can I control that? I, I don't, it's, it's hard, it's a battle, it still is, still is, so I just calm down and as I said to you guys, when I see that, that emotion coming up, I calm down and you know it's hey, now, it's right? yeah, yeah. Now, now I can see it, so I said, it's coming, it's coming, but let it get to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would like to hear about some of the tools that you use and some of the action steps that you take to put you on that path. I know getting up your morning routine is important to you. Sure. So you tell us a little bit about how you use that, you know, the gym and, and how you use that to really ground yourself in the, during the day. How, you know, that's a, that's a very a good question because I, I do it before bed. I, I don't do it in the mornings, but before going to bed, I always write three things that, I, that I'm grateful for. And I've been working on that. Some days I skip it, but some I try to do it as much as I can and realize whenever I'm happy, thinking, hey, you're, you're happy now, be grateful for what you have, for what you're going through. You know, thankful I have this, I'm being happy now, don't forget about it. And then the gym. The gym has, has always been a... When I went to Toronto and I discovered the gym itself, that I started training because I would go to the gym and I would not know what to do. But then after I knew the gym, the gym, the gym changed me until now. I realized that your health is the most the most important thing, and being healthy for me is it's it's a value. It, I value it because the gym is not a short term. It's not okay. I want to do this for this month to look good or whatever it is, but it's more of a long term because as I grow older, okay, if I have whatever obligations I would have, I want to still be able to be healthy. If it's not the gym, it might be taekwondo or it might be going for a walk or eating healthier because it's more of a long term you're growing older and your body will change so that's that's what i do every morning yeah going to go to the gym so after learning a little bit more about you today my man what do you hope people can take away from your story best thing stay humble and work always work on yourself work on what matters for you and life will throw rocks at you but keep, keep yourself grounded and keep your values, even if, if you are facing a bad time. Go through it, go through it, because honestly, at that time, it feels like hell, because you're going through it and, and you feel like there's no hope. But once you look back, you realize, I needed this. And then that's when I said that things happen for a reason, because you realize, oh, if this would, would have not happened to me, then I wouldn't be who I am today. So that, that would be the biggest thing. I'm Jesus Hernandez and this is my voice. <laughs>